an amazing journey of perseverance. And I'm so pleased to welcome in the hometown favourite this week, Mina Haragai, onto set here at the US Women's Open. Um, we were just talking during that piece, which is a pretty emotional journey that you've been on, and we'll get to that. But you said you've played Pebble Beach over 50 times, but under 100 times, which we worked out is probably more than the rest of the field combined out here. What does it mean to be teeing it up at a US Women's Open here at probably your favourite course in the world? It, it is my favourite course in the world. I mean, it's hard to beat the views. Um, but it, it means so much to me. I just remember when I was a junior golfer growing up here, you know, when I was 10, 11 years old, I would actually practice on the practice putting green here. And, you know, you'd be doing um, putting drills or just, you know, having fun. And you know, uh, if I had like a five footer, I'd be like, this is to win the U.S. Open. But it's, I never dreamed of it actually being me playing in a women's U.S. Open here. So it's just, it's a dream come true that I just never thought I, that would happen so it's amazing you've been playing here since you've been 11 years old can you remember your very first memory of pebble i you know i feel like i played it when i was 10 or 11 uh, i had some family friends here but i also um i'm pretty sure my first round was with um my best friend uh who i played golf with here grew up sydney burleson she works for pebble beach company and we were 11 and we're just having a great time. Like, I don't know what we shot. She has a better memory of it than I do. But I think when I was that young, I didn't appreciate like how cool it was to be out there. But you know, through the years, and especially now, I'm just so grateful to be from here. Do you have any shot recollections? Do you have any special moments that you've had on this golf course that you can bring to this experience this week? Uh, I've had a few. I've, I was fortunate enough to play in the first tee open uh, from when I was a freshman of senior year in high school. First year I played with Tom Watson. That was a treat. And then the next three years I played with Tom Kite. And I just remember when I was at Tom Watson, I, we went um, on 17 green. We were behind there. Um, behind the green and he's like do you want me to show you the chip shot that I hit <laughs> and I was like yeah <laughs> that was great and um Tom Kite he we still text he still texts me he's such a great guy um but playing with him for three years it was just so much fun was so many memories he he actually um taught me how to um determine like the slope like just, you know, using your hand, like when I was a kid, because you didn't have like range finders with slopes back then. So he was just like, hey, this is how you do it. <laughs> you got all the insights. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the insight that you've got into this course is, is second to none. You've got so much more experience than anyone else in this field. How is this setup comparing to previous conditions that you've played Pebble in? And what do you make of this US Women's Open setup? It's, it's a championship golf week, definitely. The rough is pretty gnarly out there. I mean, you can drop five golf balls in the same area and you're gonna get all kinds of lies out here. Um, I think that's the biggest difference um, from when I played, obviously for fun or um, other tournaments. Uh, the rough was never this um, lush. Greens are gonna be a little firmer and faster, which, you know, the greens are very small out here, so it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, probably different than most courses that we play on tour. So uh, the small greens and the heavy, heavy rough, it's, that's the, that's the um, deal breaker for sure. Not to give away the secret sauce, but having played this so many times, what do you feel like the key is gonna be to be successful here this week? I think you have to hit it good <laughs> and you have to be really adaptable, I think, because um, obviously, if you've been here the last few days, it can be so fogged in, you can't even see in front of you, or it could be beautiful like this. So I think um, really being able to adapt to this, um, to the weather, the surroundings, and good ball striking. You've also got your husband on the back. Yep. The, yeah, you guys are newlyweds. Um, I don't think you know this, but when you guys actually got married at Superstition, I was prepping early for the event, and I'm actually... And officially invited your wedding, so I'm in the very back there practicing with really? Colossi. Yeah, and I just wanted you to know. There I am. That's there I am hilarious. with Colossi. Yeah, yeah, so I just want to say thanks for the invite, and yeah. I appreciate it. It was a great day. Um, I think I took money off Colossi that day as well, so it was a good day all around. But, but yeah, no, I mean, how's that dynamic? Obviously, there's a lot of kind of couples on tour, and not many of them kind of caddy for their partners. So yep. I was just seeing, like, how you guys are. Are you still happily married after... <laughs> After working together? You know, it was hilarious. The, um, so we got married, you know, the Saturday before, and we barely got through the super, the, that tournament week. It was, <laughs> like, I think just a lot of stress, but we always joke, like, well, we made it through week one at least. But I, I, I realized that um, not everyone can work with their 
um, significant other, especially like, because we're, we're together all the time. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, it works for us. I really, really enjoy him being on the bag. I, you know, I really trust his input and um, yeah, it works for us. <laughs> yes, that's great to hear. Watch out, Mel Reed the best wedding crasher you'll probably ever meet. Yeah, um, yeah it was a great wedding. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, just to look back on your performance last year at this championship, of course, that finish at second place is what got you in to this week at Pebble. Obviously, a huge opportunity on the line, but you also walked away with a million dollars, which is the biggest second place purse that we've ever had uh, on the LPGA Tour and, and in, in these majors. That's a life-changing kind of money. How much were you thinking about that at the time? And just talk us through this week and how you found that success. I, I tried my best um, not to think about what was on the line. Um, I tried my best to not see what second place finish was, but it's hard to ignore it, especially um, Saturday after the round. I mean, the purse breakdown was right in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I took a peek, but I feel like um, despite all that, I was able to really focus on um, just trying to play good golf on Sunday. Um, I think what really helped was even though Minji, right off the bat, I think she went birdie birdie, so I was already pretty far behind. But um, Travis really kept me in it by saying like, "Hey, you could, like let's you could still win this." So like I think me focus on trying to win instead of settling for second helped me actually secure that second place, especially when I was coming down um, 15, 16, 17, 18. I, I was so nervous, my stomach hurt. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was, was like, I could feel my heart pounding, you know, pounding in my chest. Um, my stomach hurt, and I was just like, you just one, more, you know, one good drive, one good shot, one good putt. So, um, but yeah, I think really having that trying to win mentality actually helped me, you know, uh, see through the end. And just finally, I mean, you have been on. A pretty tough journey in this game, falling away and coming back and sort of refining yourself during the pandemic and now, you know, into your 30s and finding more success out here than you ever have. I know something that you said was it's just about now trying to tap back into that 11 year old who had a lot of fun out there. Something sort of a message that Rory McIlroy sort of attested to a couple of years ago as well. What is the key part in making that happen and going back to that youth and that innocence and that sort of naivety about the struggles that golf can bring? Yeah, you know, when you're struggling out there, especially when you're playing golf for a living, it feels like a job. You're like, okay, you you make cuts to pay bills. It's it's um, you kind of lose. At least I did. I lost that um, spirit of being competitive. Like it was more like, okay, get through um, get through the first round, get through the second round. Okay, let's see how much I can make um, to meet, make ends meet. And then um, during the pandemic. Um, I had all that time where, you know, I worked on my game um, and just really found the enjoyment of actually just playing golf, like trying to get better, um, really seeing like, hey, like today was great because I hit it like better than I have in the last three years and um, things like that. And um, actually one of um, Carlota Singanda, you're very good friends mm -hmm. with her. She's at Superstition too. Um, I heard her talking about how um, she's like, I just enjoy competing, whether it's for $5 for dinner or for a million dollars. And then I like, that really like hit me during the pandemic. I was like, hey, like I haven't felt that way <laughs> in a really long time. So I think going into the Cactus Tour, playing that, I found that like sense of enjoying just competing and like trying to make as many birdies as I can. And I was able to bring that to the tour um, when we started back up. Yeah, and bouncing back with that resilience, it has brought you right here to Pebble Beach, your home course in front of a home crowd. I'm sure this will probably be the most special week of your career, Mina. So enjoy every minute of it, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.